As a homeowner, do you experience this problem? Overgrowth of plant material hiding or somewhat concealing the architecture of the home, as in this case. How do you know which plants to keep, which to transplant, and which to remove? Well, we will address those issues as well as others on this Designer's Landscape. As a landscape contractor, when I visit a site, it's important for me to add my input, but not to be so persuasive as to say, oh, all these big overgrown plants need to just come out of here. My goal is really to talk with the homeowner and get a feel for their expectations and their goals. Having been in here maybe just two or three years, they were pretty much presented with this problem initially, the overgrowth again. Since the architecture of homes have changed, we need to think about changing the plants, maybe bringing them down or keeping them lower to keep most of, most of the site in view. Uh, one thing I notice here worth saving or utilizing is the evergreen giant liriope. Number one, this border grass or all border grass is tough. The transplanting is somewhat 100% guaranteed, so we'll make usage of that. As I look closer into the corner, Indian hawthorn has a fungus, a little thin. We'll, we'll take that out, but look at that beautiful sago. Definitely a specimen worth either transplanting or utilizing later in the landscape. Underneath here, these hollies are really hitting that marginal, do we keep them or not? Again, I, I introduced that back to the homeowner. What do you think? And they said, if we remodel certain areas and we leave these, they're going to be stand out as we know we should have done something about it. So they'll come out. Otherwise, pushing down the line, some more evergreen giant liriope. The Burford holly will come out, but we'll utilize these border grass. The Parsons juniper behind me is beautiful. It has a blue color, but now we really need to reconsider our total design remodeling from corner to corner to the street even. Now, as we approach the street, uh, we have a community sidewalk, and it's wider than normal. Instead of three feet, we've got a four-foot wide walk, which really shortens our little span from the walk to the curb or the street. Well, as I look behind me here, I see a little rectangle of grass, mailbox, mailbox, a little rectangle of grass, corner, 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 corners everywhere. Can we do something a little challenging, something different for the neighborhood here? Well, we need to consider crossing over behind in order to maybe achieve something uh, that's not par for the course in this neighborhood, but would look better, having curb appeal, street appeal. What I found interesting about the center right part of the yard is this existing oak tree. We're going to utilize it and bring it into our game plan. I mean, it's nice to have a tree out here so that all the specimens aren't just packed up against the house. So that's a nice feature. Also at the street, I've got this little cable box. So what we're going to do, I'm going to stand in what's existing grass. We'll take this turf out and cross over, but convert this to, well, lower plant, so to speak. And I'll really head right around the tree with a flowing curve that should complement some of our new bed lines. And what do you say we jump over to the street with this pattern? Now again, the thought is to convert this, remove the grass, maybe two types of plants that are low, but really accent the sidewalk right here. What do you say we go round off the corner by the driveway next? Now this is, you've seen us do this before. I've actually dotted or pre-drawn a little mark on here so that I could really pick up and connect across the sidewalk. What I want to try to do is eliminate the corner behind me, these two, and the goal is to take a square front yard and to contour or curve it. Take this all the way to the sidewalk up front. Now this will in turn add some much needed interest to the lawn, the nice curves, as well as making it easier to maintain.
our final landscape expansion will come right near the front door, near the front walk, in order to jet out and really create some interest. Well, I think you know what comes next. A large amount of clean out and preparation. Okay, a lot has been done. We've hauled off about four <laughs> loads of unwanted debris. And I'm kind of concerned a little bit about these existing trees. They've been doing fine, but I just want to make sure I rake all that excess dirt from around there. We're working on grading this out. What do you think? I mean, has it opened things up? We had the, the big section of Aztec in here, and we've transplanted a lot of the Evergreen Giant Liripe and Aztec. Kind of set it over here in the corner, out of the way for safekeeping and for reinstallation. The nice thing is that um, the Aztec we're finding available now is not that great. So this is nice and full and beautiful. So we'll reuse it. Look at the risers here. I mean, with time, you see how the owner or contractor has pulled up these to spray over the, the hedge that we had here. Now, after we plant, we'll come in, drop these down to our desired new height or level, and then probably paint them black just to kind of let them go away a little bit. Anyway, we've received back the architecture of the home. That's what we're aiming for. And if you take a look over the Sago palms, we had two of them clumped together here. And now, by process of removal, we, we came in and cleaned up underneath the Sago so we could get access to the root ball, dug our trench, and we like to leave a few fronds on the top so we can pull that over, and dig on one side, pull it back the next way. We, we kind of use it as a ponytail to drag it to our receiving hole. And what I've done is I've set it out there in the open and we have this new little asymmetrical triangle here for balance. And I think that's gonna work pretty well. <clears throat> Those two are kind of closely uh, clumped together. I'm gonna check with the homeowner here to see if, uh, do we keep this? I, it could be a little overbearing for the window. I don't know, a matter of opinion or choice, but I really do like the way the light color of the house, this beautiful dark lush color of the Sago is uh, silhouetted on there. I mean, definitely a nice standout. And since now we've cleaned out our high hedge, we can see the banding here. And so really lower plants are all that's gonna be necessary. <laughs> we found a few things during the clean out and one was this extension of this uh, down, down pipe or down drain. Uh, I don't know if we can try to do something by sectioning that off, but to make sure that we get the proper discharge of water here. So we'll kind of work on that, but uh, things look better from here on. Yes, having it cleaned out really does help things. Now, yes, we've left these two beautiful holly specimens in here uh, because they're doing exactly what we would have them do. Friends, you see us use the, the East Palatka holly standard and that's exactly what these trees are. Well, this is the ultimate uh, as far as I'm concerned. Basically, we use this as a patio tree because it doesn't get too tall. And if you take a look at this guy in particular, from a front perspective, it's open and cleared the banding here, the window is presented, but yet the trees are on the voids of the wall, which is exactly what we want. Now we can come under, under here with a couple different layers of lower lying varieties. Maybe at the corners we can use something taller to hide the, the hose bib and the downspout, but really towards the wing wall in that, perfect. Now, again, the statement about the holly tree is this. Um, 12 to 15 foot overall height. It, it does this little mushroom. See, they've clipped it the back of the wall and then overflowing here, where eventually this can be brought up even and hang over the walk and you can walk underneath it. So when we plant an East Palatka holly, as a designer, this is uh, the ultimate look. This is what I'm trying to achieve. These trees have been here for at least five to eight years and so they have somewhat matured and given us that that look, the quality look that we're aiming for. Uh, 
We have cleaned out the bed lines with the unwanted grass, and due to a frost and freeze, you can't really see the difference of the browned out grass and the brown soil. So when we get that landscaped and mulched, it'll pop out a little bit more. But believe me, those beds are cleaned out. Now we're ready to talk about some plant types and varieties. Let's begin with one of the new red holly varieties, oak leaf holly. This beautiful ilex is a fairly large growing shrub, but very cold tolerant. We're going to use it as individual specimens along the house, and we'll ask that they be maintained or pruned to keep this kind of globular or pyramidal type shape so that they'll be seen as individuals for the long run or the long term. Now going down to another type of holly, this is Ilex Bordeaux, a new patented variety of holly, and it has a nice purplish tinge to the color of the new growth. This holly usually has a grayish green rather than a green green hue or color to the foliage, but the new flush of growth, uh, growth again with that burgundy color is unique. A characteristic of a nice compact growth habit and a beautiful cold tolerant plant too. We've got a low juniper here, but I want to show you this new clay era, another patented plant. This is called Bronze Beauty. Do you know why it's called Bronze Beauty? Look at the tips of the new growth here. What a beautiful hue. Now, <clears throat> underneath here is more of a bronze color. This is kind of a mix with the fall color and cool weather that we're having. It turns this little bit of purple hue or purple color. Now, as that matures, it'll convert to green, which is a natural color. And then when you get those flushes during the season, this bronze will take over the outside of the plant. Uh, do you notice also the leaf, uh, as opposed to a regular clay era, is a little more dwarf in nature. So the plant is a little more compact as well. Finally, a patented Laura Pedlum called Pizzazz. Now, we use this for foliage color. And with the fall weather and the winter here, the cool season we've had, it was 28 here last night, and so these are also turning this royal burgundy. So we look forward to mixing in these hues in order to build contrast into our landscape. I'm just kind of picking through some of these Aztec grass that we'll get to use, they're going to make a nice addition back into the front yard landscape. They're so healthy and full, and they transplant so good. I want to show you now what we've set up and installed, beginning with the oak leaf holly. We've used them up against the backdrop here, this beautiful glossy green holly leaf on the, the white of the home. Now, we've also placed some on the other side, not as many. And then we come down to the clay era, the bronze leaf. Isn't that a beautiful color to work off of the color of the house? We look forward to that maturing and getting larger. These will need to be pruned or maintained so that they really do remain independent. In other words, uh, we don't necessarily want this all to grow together like we had it. We want them to stay individual. That's a maintenance thing. Down front here, we've used the Royal Burgundy Ilex. I've set some of them up, and I'm not really sure exactly if, if this is our arrangement or not, but we're working along the curve or the contour of the shape of the bed as well. Now over here with the Razzleberry, I have an idea. I'd like to try to start them in here by the Sago and spin them all the way towards the driveway. I'm hoping with the Laura Pedalum, the Pizzazz, that we can stretch it all the way out here. I hope you can see that line. And then what we'll have to do is barely nick it by the corner of the house there where the hose bib is and the riser, the sprinkler, and the downspout because I've got to make a large circular arch there in order to hook up with the curve I've got. We'll set some up and we'll take a look at it. I could tell when we started setting this line up, we were trying to do too much, trying to stretch it uh, to do a little more than we need to. Especially, I mean, you can see down the line here, we're trying to make quite a big circle, even from the front porch, the reverse angle. It looks good coming down along the driveway, but we, when we consider the whole circle, uh, a little bit much. Again, even over by the Sago Palm here, 
reverse angle looking back, uh, it just doesn't curve right. We've got too much of a straight line. So uh, I have one proposal. Let me, let me bring you up to the porch and we'll kind of see what we can do. We may have to shorten this line up a bit. Ah, the double row is a little more impressive. It really gives us what we're looking for. And doesn't this color look good against the home as well? Now, the Aztec grass with the color of the Laura Petalum is going to be also a dramatic contrast. So we'll use some of the Aztec right in here at the front door for impact and some pizzazz. You know, things are shaping up. When we start to get things placed in the ground, like the Aztec, I really love this contrast we've got going with the dark uh, purplish color of the Razzleberry and the white Aztec. Looking good. And to show you a few more things, um, take a look close by the door. We've placed some oak leaf holly up there too. Those are going to have to remain pruned and stay tight to remain independent again. And then our filler, our evergreen giant liriope, we've used underneath the window, kind of floating between the two new varieties that we've installed there. Our final impression, I think from your angle, I like the way the dwarf holly, the shillings, the Bordeaux, comes in and makes a nice smooth curve. We can put a little filler on the inside, but that look in itself, shaping up great. Now I've uh, brought some Bordeaux shillings over here to kind of mimic or uh, give a little balance there. And I don't know if you just looked recently at the Razzleberry, the pizzazz, when we get a lighter coat under there of mulch, it'll stand out more. Right now we've got a dark plant on the dark soil, so it's not as you know, readily noticeable. What I've done here is kind of drawn a thumb bed, if you will, for the Ilex shillings, the Bordeaux, to come out and cross over and go in between. This will be the largest shrub we have in here. What I mean by it is this will be a couple feet tall, so to speak. We'll go lower with maybe a low juniper, and then we need some color or something lower in here close to the walk. Let's get these installed and see what else we can come up with to kind of paint the final picture. It gives us great pleasure to have a plan and see it begin to work. And that is, we wanted to accomplish this crossover or connection with our little strip here in the right of way. And we've, we've really done that with the Aztec grass primarily here to soften the cable box and give us that little bit of tie-in. Then we come back with Clayera over to my right and a little group of it here. As far as down close, to me, we've used a dwarf Asiatic jasmine to really stay compact and low. On the other side, by the driveway, we've also installed clay era for the repetition there and balance. Now let's go close to the house and see just what we've accomplished there. Now when we think about all the time, attention, and effort that has gone into the reconstruction. Go back and look at what we had originally. Plants that were somewhat overgrown, packed and pressed up against the house. A straight hedge over here. And then some overgrown ilex and big shillings that we pulled out, used to kind of redecorate. Now our new theme is lower plants that show off the character of the home and that won't overgrow so much and, and really break into this window. We've kept our remaining ligustrum and holly trees here for accent pieces and then built upon them. When I look around the neighborhoods, I see the big bulky shrubs up against the house. But now we've got this open window. You can see the banding and again, the character of the home. So from reverse angle, let's go back and reflect on what we had. Again, the big bulky overgrown look and now uh, what we have.
It's always great to have you with us on the designer's landscape. I'll see you on another project. I'm Gary Allen. So long.